Right, so now let's look more carefully at the, at the partition operation that Quicksort is based on. Um, this is a tricky piece of code to write. It's also a tricky piece of uh, code to explain. Um, so so let, uh, let's go through it slowly and carefully, and hopefully this will help us. We actually need to sit down and, and, and code this up. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pick a value. It helps to have the, uh, the pivot value as the first value in our array. So we can either choose the first value as the pivot, or we can move another value into that place. So if we want to choose a different pivot like the last value, we just swap it with the first value so that we start with the pivot in the first position. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to keep track. We're essentially keeping track of where the pivot should go. Um, that's because at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to swap the pivot into place, essentially. So we're going to keep track of the proper location for the pivot value. And then when we're done, we'll put the pivot value there and that should partition the array. Now, it's also possible though that we need to move some values around inside the array as we go. Because for example, right now, if you look at the array, there's nowhere in the array where the pivot could go that would divide it with the values to the left being smaller and the values to the right being bigger, right? There, there's no actual um, place in, in the array where the where I could swap the pivot right now and have it be and have it be valid right so I may need to move some other values around as I go um, okay so let's talk this through so um, I start um, with I'm, I'm considering the rest of the array right and so essentially if I see a value that's smaller than the pivot I swap it into the part that's smaller than the pivot. Now in this case, five is smaller than the pivot, but I'm just getting started. And so you can imagine swapping five with the current location of the pivot, but that doesn't accomplish anything because the current location of the pivot is node five. So that's five, or is the value five. Okay, so let's go on. If I see a value that's larger than the pivot value, um, I don't increase the pivot position, but I just move on to the next value. Okay, now I see a value that's smaller. And so the trick is I need to make sure that this value ends up to the left of the pivot. And so what I do is I do two things. I swap it with the current pivot position and then I also increase, sorry, I'm going backwards. Then I also increase the size of the values that are the part of the array that has values in it that are smaller than the pivot, right? So right now you could see um, if I, um, you know, if, if I, right now, uh, you'll see that what happened here, right? So I swapped uh, seven and three, right? And that's to move three to the left of seven because at this point, essentially the pivot's gonna need to go between uh, three and seven, right? So right now, there is a valid position for the pivot in the part of the array that I've considered, which would be th between three and seven because I haven't thought about four yet, right? Four is also smaller, so it's also gonna have to be swapped, right? Still a valid location for the pivot, which would be between four and seven. Now 11 is bigger, and so I can just move on. Eight is bigger, and I can just move on. One, negative one is smaller. So same thing, I swap it uh, with the current pivot position and I move the pivot position over one, okay? So now what you'll see is that the pivot can be put here, right? In between negative one and 11. If I put it there, the values to its right are bigger, the values to its left are smaller. And so the last thing to do is to swap the pivot into place. And I can swap the pivot with any value that is inside the smaller portion of the array, right? Because it's gonna be less than or equal to the pivot value. And so in this case, I swap it with negative one and I'm done. So my pivot is in the right spot. You'll see that the values to its right are larger, the values to its left are smaller than or equal to. Um, and this is also an O N operation. This go, it takes one pass through the array, right? To figure out where the proper location of the pivot value is. I do need to look at every value, right? So you'll see that I've considered every value in the array as I go, but I don't need to loop or anything like that. I just look at values one at a time and I either do one of two things, right? If the value is bigger, I just go on. If it's smaller, I swap it into the part of the array that's smaller than the pivot and I increase the part that part of the array by size one, right? By, by shifting the pivot location over by one. If I do this, go through all the way, then the pivot will end up in the right spot or, or I'll have a place to put the pivot when this part of the algorithm completes.